In this tutorial we're going to be looking at creating a UV map. So the UV maps can be edited via the UV UV editor and I'm just going to set this up so it's in my same workspace. So to do that I'm just going to go to panels and go to saved layouts and find perspective and UV editor. There they are. The UV editor window can be navigated like any uh, other sort of window inside of uh, Maya. So we can sort of scroll out and also use the Alt middle mouse button to pan across and, and so forth. When you select an object, you'll see it in the UV space. So here you can see this sort of basic uh, uh, building. Here you can see a basic building. If I press A, I can see all and I can even go into different component modes and press F to focus in on different objects as well. Within the space itself, I can go into shell mode and select uh, multiple shells, like so, or I can uh, select a UV mode and select individual UVs and move those around, like so as well as edges and faces and vertexes. Okay, so the most efficient way to create um, UV maps and the most effective and consistent way is to directly select faces and then use planar projection. So this is the method we're gonna take for this room. So first of all, I'll start with the floor like so, and I'm just selecting all the faces of the floor, and then under UV, I'll go planar project, planar, mapping options, and I'll select the Y axes, and importantly, I'll keep image width ratio, and go project. So what that has done is put my UV space in the one section, which is good, but I'm just gonna move it to one side um, so I can manage all the pieces uh, as we go. So if I turn on my check within my UV space, I can see that my checks aren't distorted and they're nice and even. So the next step is to go through and select the different uh, other spaces, So which I've already done in this case, so I won't uh, do that again. But as you can see, I've done that process and I've got um, these different shells already defined. So if I go into shell mode, I can just select each of the, the separate shells, which were done in the same planar projection. But instead of projecting in the Y axis, this one is facing the uh, X, as I can see down the bottom there, and Z, and this one is a Y as well. So now I've got uh, these uh, all lined up, or all laid out. I need to work out which ones I want to have close together and where I want seams and where I don't want seams. So I don't want to seam in between those two walls. So what I'm going to do is take, if I select an edge, I can see this is the same edge as that. And I'm going to align them up in a second. But before I do that, the one thing that I want to make sure is with the grid that everything is of the same scale. Um, so the these guys at the top uh, have already been uh, scaled down so that they match, and you can tell that it's the same scale by the size of the um, the uh, check. So if I move the check and line it up against the one next to it, I should see that my cubes are the same size. Like so. So the only one that isn't that is the bottom one. So it looks a little bit big. So I'll go use the scale tool and I'll scale in the middle so that it is scaling in both axes at the same time. And I will scale it down or scale it up in this case to scale the, the cubes down and just move them over so I can line them up a little bit as well and match. And so there we go, that looks good to me. And the other thing I wanna do is 
I want to line this edge with that one up the top there. So I'll just turn off the grid for a sec. Um, so these two edges, which will mean I'll have to go in, select my mesh and rotate it around. I could use the rotate tool like so, or I can just come up here and use the rotate like so. And all right, so now I've got that edge and that edge. Um, manually, I could come up here and select the whole thing and use the W key for move. And if I press D on the keyboard, I move into the uh, moving the, the pivot point of the selection. And if I click V and drag the, the um, handle to one of the points, then I can snap it to one of the extra points on the edges, press D again, and then V again to snap to the points up the top there. And as you can see, it's a little bit size different. So I'm going to scale it down a little bit. All right, so I'll just do that again, scale it up a little bit more and move it over. All right, so that's pretty close. I can fix that up in a second. So now what I'm going to do is go edge, grab those two edges, and instead of um, uh, just moving it as I did before, I can use this other tool, which is move and sew edge, and they'll sew those edges together. So G is going to do the same thing. And you can see I've distorted everything a little bit now. So I'm going to go in and fix that distortion by selecting all those vertices and then um, aligning them up so they're perfectly straight now. So I'm just going to do that for each of the, the different rows. And it's a bit hard to see the change, but there's a, a minor change. And like so. So now they're all lined up perfectly and I'm going to go through, grab the other edge there we go. Grab those two edges and use that move tool again. So uh, under UV, move, move and sew edge. And there we go. So if I press the grid now, you can see that the grid, there's no seams in between there and there's no seams in between there. And also I've got a nice doorway coming through there as well. So the the last ones to do are the, the more finer details. So these guys on the side, um, which I've already done a planar projection for. So I'll grab them. And in this case, uh, I need to line them up. And this time I'm going to do it sort of um, manually. Grab some UVs, scale it down, move it close grab the UVs, grab those, and, and like so. And, and then I'll use the uh, Move and Scale tool. Um, using Shift on the keyboard and then right mouse button will bring up the markup menu. Um, which will give you the ability to do stuff according to what you've got selected. So in this case, we've got the edges selected, so I can go move and sew, and sew those together. So there's a little bit of um, finicky stuff going on here. I'll just bring that down underneath, like so. And these guys aren't perfectly lined up, so I'll just line them up with, with that. And the same with these guys down here. I'll just line them down the bottom. All right, so I'll do that for the other side as well. This case, in this case, I have to do it for the planar projection. And the nice thing about, um, uh, I'll just focus in on that space. The nice thing about uh, this uh, quick shortcut, shift, right click, It'll bring up the planar and it will suggest the best planar for what's selected. So it's a really quick way of uh, working. The only problem is 
it doesn't um, do the keep width ratio option but that's okay we can quickly scale it down to match and I'm just moving it in the same direction and I think it might be upside down so I'll just go face yep and that and to see which way things are facing, we can turn on this icon and red indicates that they're facing in the wrong direction. So I'll select that shell and I'll flip it over like so. And I also need to rotate it around like so. So grab that shell and this time I'm going to use the same technique as before. Pressing D to move it, V, move and drag, snap to the edge, D again, and then V again to snap it. And I'll go in and select these UVs and push those guys down and also push these ones down as well. So they line up. And I'll double check my UV map. to see if I've got any sort of distortion um, and just from eyeballing it looks pretty good it's probably a little bit squished so that looks a bit better like so all right so I'll do the same thing for the window now you'll notice that I haven't done the top oh, let's do that first Turn off the grid and we'll go up here and the top face is here. I'll right click planar projection, just bring it down. Now if I put it in the top here when we do a texture it's not going to really fit. So I'm just going to lay it out in a, its own space. But what's important is that the grid is the same size. So I'll go in and I'm just clicking on these side handles. And I can see that I've actually, it's meant to go this way. Like so. And I'll just drop that handle. Do scale and I'll scale it until the boxes, this cubes or squares match like so and yeah I can even take up this space in the middle okay so I'll just continue on uh, to do the same process but with the the faces for the window now okay so I've just done the the window and I'm just going to double check that the UVs are not stretched and they're of the sort of appropriate size. As you can see this one here is probably not the best so what we're going to do is fix this up by scaling it out a little bit like so which I imagine we'll have to do to the other one as well just to get that sort of consistency of scale um, across. Uh, also these guys aren't looking awesome so I'll just scale, uh, that must be the top one, and I've got it in the wrong spot. That looks pretty good. And so I'll just take that, this one here, the move tool, that one, move that up like so, move that one down like so. And that's better. And just double check everything else. This one here is looking, I'll press F to, to focus in. And I'll scale this one as well, just to get that consistency of the checker pattern across my UV space. Okay, there we go. So the last thing we have to do, uh, We've got the roof as well, and the roof's looking pretty good. I think I'll line it up to this edge here, and 
So this is where I have to decide whether I want to have it up the top here or if I want to be more efficient with my UV space having it down the bottom here. So depending if I want to have a seamless texture um, connected. Um, I'm going to go for the seamless texture because I may want to um, create some similar sort of water damage or something going across both those two and it'll be easier if I do it up here and I'm not too concerned about um, like the size of the texture where if I was in a game environment then creating a UV um, map that's more efficient would be more appropriate or even just creating a UV atlas a texture atlas alright so I'll move that grab those two edges and I'll just use the shift move and sew like so and it's sew them together all right now the important part about UVs is that we want to be working within the one space in this UV grid so the positive one so zero to one uh, space as it's called and I'll grab that whole shell by marquee selecting it all and I'll bring it in and I'll scale it together making sure that I'm scaling in the middle so I don't distort any of those um, careful UV proportions that I've uh, been working hard to towards um, and I'll just put it into my UV space and try and maximize it as much as sort of possible Like so, and because I'm scaling it all together, that everything stays in proportion. So if I turn on the grid as well, we got bigger, bigger um, checker pattern, but everything's proportional. And you can see that UV nicely going around that corner there, as well as that corner and that corner there. So there we have it. There's our UV map using planar projection.